Well, whether whole brain emulation, uh, as it's called, will be feasible in the lifetime of Johnny Depp, I have no idea. I guess it depends on how long he lives. Um, there are reasons, though, I think, to think that it is in principle possible and that it will be developed in the fullness of time if science and technology continues. If you think about what would be required to perform uh, a mind upload, it looks like you would need three enabling technologies. Um, scanning, image interpretation, and, and fast computers. Um, let's look at each of these in turn. So scanning, what that means is that you would have to take a brain, um, fixate it, and then slice it up into very thin slices. Uh, and then you would feed each of these slices through some array of microscopes, um, resulting in, in a stack of two-dimensional pictures of the brain. And then in stage two, you would need uh, image recognition software that could piece together from this stack of two-dimensional pictures the three-dimensional connectivity matrix that was in the original brain. And combining that with neurocomputational models of how each basic type of neuron works, what kind of computation it performs. Um, and then finally, when you have this whole computational structure, you would need a fast enough computer to be able to run it all. Now, if we look at where we are today with regard to these three enabling technologies, it's, we are quite far away from being able to upload even a simple critter, let, let alone like a human being. Um, there is a product on the way at the moment to try to upload a C. elegans, which is a nematode worm with exactly 302 neurons. Uh, by comparison, the human brain has close to 100 billion neurons. Um, now with the C. elegans, we already actually do know the connectivity matrix. We know which neurons are connected with which ones. We don't quite yet know uh, the sign of these connections, which connections are excitatory and which are inhibitory. But that's roughly the size of the product that it would make sense to undertake today. Uh, to scale that up to a human, you would need uh, massive uh, progress in microscopy, in image recognition, neurocomputational science, and, and supercomputing. Um, but in principle, it looks feasible. So we already have the nice resolution. I mean, you can see with a microscope, if you want, an individual atom. And we have sharp enough microscopes to do that. It's just that if you want to image like a sizable volume, like a brain, at that level of resolution, it's going to take forever. So we need progress in high throughput uh, microscopy. We do have neurocomputational models of some types of neuron that are fairly good. Uh, we need to expand that to get the whole library of all the basic types of neuron. And the fastest supercomputers we have today might perhaps be fast enough to run a human brain emulation. Most likely you would need uh, slightly faster and more capacious computers, but it looks like we're getting there. Um, what it seems we would not require, um, however, to get the ability to perform whole brain emulation is any radical conceptual breakthrough and a new basic insight. You wouldn't need to understand how the mind works. Uh, you would only need to understand how the components of the mind works at the level of individual neurons. So, Although whole brain emulation would require these advanced enabling technologies that we're still far away from having, it looks like you could get there eventually by just slogging along and making incremental progress along all these paths. And, and you wouldn't need this kind of breakthrough idea uh, about how the brain works or how the mind is, is created by the brain.